Well, now we are to approach the Higgs-Boson sig signature theorem. To do that, we need some background about what um, multiplicative sequences are. And in order to formulate the, the, the theorem itself, we need to know what an L genus is. So, apart from talking about multiplicative sequences of polynomials, we are also going to talk about genera. Well, first of all, a little bit of notation. I'm going to refer to this, uh, mm, this A, this big A, as a commutative ring consisting of formal sums of this, this form. And what well, a unit in, in that ring should then look like, like So first of all, we're going to consider a sequence of polynomials like the one that you have here. Um, well, this notation can be a bit tricky because you have to have in mind that when I write x sub 1, I am referring to, to, to well, the, the 1 means that that has degree 1. And if I'm writing x2, then that has degree 2. So, well, if I want this, to be a homogeneous poly uh, polynomial homogeneous of degree, then I could write an example. For example, I could have just to make the relation clear. If I have this here, um, I want I want it to be a, um, a polynomial of degree two, homogeneous of degree two. So this has degree one, this has degree two, so I can just write x2, but as x has degree one, I should have to write, for example, x1 squared, so that we keep the same degree throughout. Well, that was just notation. And, well, here mm, we have the, the mm, uh, well, for each element in the ring that I just mentioned, with did in term one, we can define this um, this element in the ring, and well, that element consists of the t of the sum of this um, homogeneous of degree polynomials. So, well, as I said, here the a1 has degree one. So here we have a polynomial of uh, degree one. Here a1 has degree one, but a2 has already degree two. So here we have another polynomial of degree 2, and so on, so on. And uh, these polynomials form a multiplicative sequence if they satisfy this condition here. So note that this has no sub-index, so k of ab is referring to this sum here. And so if k of a and k of b, these are referring to sums of, of this form. So, well, not every sequence satisfies that. If it, if it is satisfied, then we are defining a multiplicative sequence. Very interesting about multiplicative sequence is that they are used to define relationships between characteristic classes. And very interesting as well as is that when we define this um, these multiplicative sequences of characteristic classes, they are in one-one relation to certain formal power series. So once we have a, a power series, we can find a unique multiplicative sequence corresponding to it. And with the other way as well, if we have a, a multiplicative sequence, we know to which a power series it belongs. So. Uh, well, we, here we have the relationships that exist between the power series and the multiplicative sequence. So here, first of all, I have written down the well, uh, general shape of a formal power series. And these lambdas are the coefficients. Well, these lambdas are going to be coefficients for us. It's most convenient to, to think of in terms of, of rational numbers so that's what I'm going to be doing throughout. You could choose another, another ring as well, but it's, it's more convenient for us to use that. 
So we have our formal power series with our coefficients lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda n, and so on. And then, well, there exists only one multiplicative sequence, which we just said that they are in a 1 1 relationship, such that the coefficient of the x1 in each of these polynomials corresponds exactly with the, with the lambda n coefficient. So a polynomial k sub n of x1 to up to xn has, well, it, it has sort of something like this, 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 this shape, has that shape, and I want the, the coefficient of the x1 to correspond exactly with the coefficient of lambda n corresponding in the, in the power series. So, with a little bit of, just perhaps only just arithmetic, or a little bit of thought, mm, this is just the same as saying that this condition must be satisfied. So, we recall our definition of Ka here. So, if K of 1 plus t is, e is equal to the formal power series, then we have a relationship defined. Are you saying there exists only one? Um, I think so. Uh, yes. And now we come to the definition of a genus. Well, here's the general definition of a genus for any uh, possible multiplicative sequence. So we have our multiplicative sequence that we just defined. And now we have um, the notation for k genus. Well, um, this again is going to be, well, here I'm changing a little bit of the notation from what I've been using before. I'm going to use, uh, when I use mm, the, the name of the manifold mm, between square brackets, I'm going to be referring to the fundamental class. So note that this notation here is just the same as, um, as this here. So what we're going to be doing is, is in fact, we're going to be evaluating um, a linear combination of uh, characteristic classes. We're going to be evaluating that linear combination against the fundamental class. And you see here I've changed a little bit my notation. Instead of writing mu of the, well, as, as the fundamental class, I'm writing it as square bracket. So that's the definition. If the manifold doesn't have a multiple of four mm, dimension, then the k genus is just zero. If it's of dimension a multiple of four, then it is not zero and it belongs to, to, to the rational numbers. And well, here in particular, I'm writing down P, uh, P1, P2, Pn, denoting the, well, Pi denotes the i continuous. Well, that's the definition, that's the general definition of a genus. And, well, now we're going to, mm, we are going to move a little bit and try to figure out what the definition of the L genus is, because we are going to need it for the statement of the, of the theorem. So, we are going to consider, in particular, this formal power series. So, while well, expanding this, we get a very long thing with its coefficients that should be like the lambda 1, lambda 2, lambda 3 that I read before. And here we have the general term. And the general term, this B sub K here that you have here, denotes the K Bernoulli number. Well, that's not a really complicated thing. And it's a very, very nice appendix in the um, in Mindler's session about Bernoulli, Bernoulli numbers. So in principle, it's only just computations. So, well, just as before, we said that some coefficient has to coincide with the coefficient of x1. Well, that's exactly the same definition. So, if we consider the genus that is going to correspond to this power, the, this power series, then this gives us the L genus. And here you have notation exactly the same as we had before for the more general setting, it's exactly the same. So our definition of a genus 
should be exactly the same as the definition of the K genus that we had before, only just that instead of considering a general, mm, a general uh, multiplicative sequence, we are considering in particular the multiplicative sequence that corresponds to this formal power series. So, here's the definition of a genus. And from the definition of a genus, we can, as just as I did here for a general case, you can, well, you can think a little bit about your, about your mm, polynomials and about the polynomials you're going to get, you're going to get with your multiplicative sequence, and you think a little bit about the, mm, about the formal power series that you have and the coefficients, so you can write down quite a few polynomials. They do get a little bit complicated when you begin to, to get bigger numbers for n. So, well, I think three is enough. Four is very big and five is very hard to compute. So, well, and here are, just not to leave them out, here we have the definition of dot genus and the a hat genus, which are also very important in many contexts. Not, we are not to get into them today, but, well, they are, other genera that correspond to other multiplicative sequences. So it's interesting that when we had our, for our L genus, we were considering the formal power series, the one that corresponds to the L genus. If we take this power series here, then we are going to be defining what is called the dot genus. And another power series, say this one here, gives us the A hat genus. This one has, has names. 